Our topic for this session is superior mesenteric vessel emergencies. Our first case is one of portal venous thrombosis and bowel congestion. You can appreciate this hypodense, ill-defined filling defect in one of the right liver lobe portal venous branches. There is another one here more inferiorly, and note the wedge-shaped region of increased contrast enhancement there adjacent to it. That, of course, being due to the disproportionate provision of hepatic artery blood to that region, and pretty much a telltale sign of portal venous thrombosis. Also, of course, there's a filling defect there at the confluence of the splenic and superior mesenteric veins. Here we see, again, that filling defect in the superior mesenteric vein with significant perivascular stranding that would call your attention to that, obviously sometimes due to mixing and timing these can be difficult to, uh, to identify, these superior mesenteric venous thrombi, and that perivascular stranding can be an important indicator. Lastly, of course, there is extensive small bowel wall thickening and periintestinal stranding consistent with venous congestion. And so here is that more superior filling defect. And here the more inferior one. Again, appreciate that adjacent wedge of increased contrast enhancement. Then we'll follow the superior mesenteric vein. See that it is essentially occluded throughout its length with filling defects that extend into its many branches. Lastly, let's take a cine view of the small bowel wall edema and periintestinal stranding. So that's a case of portal venous thrombosis and bowel congestion. Our next case is a thromboembolic ischemic bowel this is a classic one that I've had in my collection for many years. You see there is a pacemaker and cardiomegaly. In addition, you can tell there is probable remote ischemic damage manifesting as thinning of the left ventricular wall. These are classic setups for superior mesenteric artery thrombosis, and just the presence of cardiomegaly and a pacemaker should heighten your vigilance for this entity. Of course, also helpful here is a relatively well-circumscribed wedge-shaped hypodensity extending to the periphery of the spleen and consistent with a thromboembolic infarct. Down in the mid-abdomen, there is a filling defect occluding the superior mesenteric artery. In addition, there's significant small bowel dilation the most common finding in ischemic bowel, uh, from an imaging standpoint, of course, small bowel dilation. Lastly, there is colonic and small bowel wall thickening, particularly on the right side of the abdomen, where you would very much expect it to be, given the location of that thrombus. So there are the splenic hypodensities, pretty typical appearance, multifocal, peripheral, wedge-shaped, and well-circumscribed. Let's look now at the superior mesenteric artery. Oof, there it went. You can pick it up very nicely there, and then it's gone. You note also the presence of that extensive bowel wall thickening and the small bowel dilation. Particularly on the right, you can see the small bowel wall thickening and mucosal enhancement, as well as that of the colon and hepatic flexure. So that's thromboembolic ischemic bowel. Our next case, another thromboembolic ischemic bowel. This one with a slightly different but still as definitive suggestion that this is in fact a vascular case. There is a small filling defect in the aorta itself. 
I'm afraid I, I don't know what ultimately was the source of that aortic clot, but certainly spotting that right off uh, will tell you I'm going to look for embolic phenomena throughout. And there it is, an occlusive thrombus in the superior mesenteric artery. And more inferiorly, a little small bowel dilation, perhaps not as dramatic as previously. There is that aortic clot, and there is that superior mesenteric clot. Let's look at those one more time. There's the aortic filling defect and the superior mesenteric. Of course, I want to point out that you should never confuse artery with vein, but also be real hesitant to call superior mesenteric venous thrombosis in settings where you ha don't have a properly delayed contrast enhancement. This is one right here where I could see easily someone making the mistake of calling a partial thrombosis of the SMV, and that is, in fact, not the case here. You can see right next to it, the real problem is that superior mesenteric artery. All right, we have one more case of thromboembolic ischemic bowel. This is similar to the first, but without the cardiomegaly. It's just such a nice depiction of the splenic infarcts that so frequently go along with a cardiac source for superior mesenteric artery thrombosis. And there it is, the filling defect occluding the SMA. Distally, we have again small bowel dilation, wall thickening, and periintestinal stranding consistent with ischemic bowel. So there they were. Note that small one to begin with, and then the larger, more inferior splenic lesions, those being classic thromboembolic. And here is the SMA, which loses its contrast column over the course of just one or two slices here. Clearly occlusive thrombosis. And in the pelvis, there are those dilated, slightly thick-walled, and stranded bowel loops. So that is another case of thromboembolic ischemic bowel. All right, our next case is a volvulus with arterial occlusion. You can see the swirling of both bowel and vessels around a central mesenteric axis. And as we follow the SMA through that, we will see it vanish. It's a segmental gap in the contrast column, but clearly that vessel is so tightly twisted that it is occluded right in its mid-portion there. Very nice depiction of a swirl sign denoting ischemic bowel. So that is a volvulus with arterial occlusion involving the SMA. Our next case is a superior mesenteric artery dissection. These can be particularly difficult to identify. Uh, oftentimes they're in the proximal SMA, right where it's taking a curve immediately beyond its origin from the aorta. It can be a tough spot to evaluate, and it's a relatively uncommon finding, obviously, so it's not one that you'll be constantly vigilant for. But you can see very nicely that linear filling defect within the SMA and a little bit of stranding surrounding it and the adjacent vein. Here you can see it very nicely, extending even beyond its first couple branches. And there is a hypodense halo around its most proximal portion right there. And it is gone. So that is a superior mesenteric artery dissection. There's a very nice view of it on the coronal. Okay, we'll follow that back out from the aorta. Right there, you can see the linear filling defect and the periarterial stranding well shown on the coronal as well. 
So that was a superior mesenteric artery dissection. Our next case is a superior mesenteric artery mycotic aneurysm. This, of course, is a case of endocarditis complicating a mitral valve replacement. So that's something to be vigilant for immediately upon sighting the presence of a mitral valve replacement. More inferiorly, there is a large fluid collection within the spleen suggesting the possibility of an abscess and possibly a thromboembolic one given the mitral valve finding. And here, along the course of the superior mesenteric artery, we see a focal enlargement with significant fluid and stranding surrounding it. And this is, in fact, a manifestation of endocarditis. So here's our mitral valve replacement. We're scrolling down to the superior mesenteric artery now. And there is the focal enlargement. You can actually see the vessel reconstitutes distal to that, but there is a fairly long segment of occlusion related to this adjacent fluid collection. There again, right along the course of the superior mesenteric artery. So that is a mycotic aneurysm of the SMA. Of course, no collection of superior mesenteric vessel pathology would be complete without a case of nutcracker syndrome. And that's what we have here with a markedly dilated stomach and duodenum consistent with obstruction and the defining finding here, the compression of the left renal vein as it crosses the aorta behind the duodenum. Lower down, you can appreciate the superior mesenteric vessels causing the compression of the third portion of the duodenum with marked reduction of its caliber and dilation of the proximal portion. So there appreciate the compression of the left renal vein and more inferiorly we will see the compression of the third portion of the duodenum by the superior mesenteric vessels. And so that is a classic nutcracker syndrome, concluding this session on superior mesenteric vessel emergencies.